Welcome back to Harbaugh. The Democrats' hope of keeping the U.S. Senate are getting stronger by the day, especially when you zero in on a key battleground state like Ohio, where Sherrod Brown seems to be successfully fighting back against the big money, what we call the dirty, angry money here on Hardball. A new Columbus dispatch poll has blown Brown up over his opponent, Josh Mandel, by 10 points now, 49 to 30. And that's a big change from their tide race in late August. Senator Sherrod Brown of Ohio is with me tonight from Cleveland. Senator Brown, Thank you so much, because I love seeing you here on this show, because you represent to me the bread and butter, the meat and potatoes Democratic Party that I grew up knowing all about and worked for when I worked for Tip O'Neill. Regular people who need regular government. It struck me, and it must have struck you, that this 47 percent thing that Romney said and didn't think anybody was recording, where he said those people don't take care of their own lives. They don't meet their own responsibilities. Well, the problem with that is he's attacking people on Social Security. It seems to me somebody's been paying payroll tax from the time they were a paper boy or a stock boy like I was from the time they were 14, has taken care and responsibility for their lives. They shouldn't be derided or mocked for not being reliable citizens. Do you ever think about that? Who he's, I'm sure you have. Yeah. He's attacking basic bread and butter people in this country who work their whole lives and are living on Social Security as somehow bums. Well, he's attacking people in Social Security. He was attacking people uh, or veterans. And you know who else he was attacking? If you watch that video, you see the, the, the wait staff walking back and forth in front of the camera. And in some sense, he was attacking them who have just their first names on their on their shirts. Yeah. And, you know, they're not paid much attention to. And they're they're probably eligible for the earned income tax credit. They're probably working harder than most people do in this society, frankly, because they're struggling and working two jobs. And He's talking about them as they're waiting on his friends. And it was pretty interesting. But, I, I you, know, you know, when you're when you're way, that's, official, probably, you know, that's probably one reason why one of them put that little camera up yeah, on the chair. Could I, don't yeah, get we, in with that SOB. We, we don't know who that was, yeah. But, but you're, you're right we about don't that. Know. It, yeah. it, but, it, but, but, Ron, I mean, I, I think the issue here is that, that, you know, when you run for office and you serve an elective office, you raise your right hand, you represent everybody, including people that might not like you and might vote against you and might contribute to your opponent. You still represent them because I, I want everybody in my state to do better. I, my focus is on people that in the middle class and people that are looking for opportunity, Pell Grants, uh, and you know, getting ahead, sending their kids to school, going to Lorraine Community College or Sinclair or whatever, and having that opportunity, the American dream. But I represent everybody and all of us should from the president on down, as you know. Let's talk about the president on down. In Ohio, do you have a sense of the, uh, the zest, uh, the, the, the excitement, the, uh, the noise of the campaign? Do you see the lawn signs? Do you see the, apparently he's got the Barack Obama's operation has 120 offices up there in your state and 600 people working there? Yeah, we have. Um, he has hundreds of people in the field as my campaign has 65 full time organizers. No campaigns in the country. I don't think any Senate candidate in the country has that kind of field operation that we do. We've been at in place since March because we know with this onslaught of 19 million dollars, the way to fight back is grassroots on online at SherrodBrown.com or in the field like that. We're working closely with the president on on registration, persuasion, get out the vote tonight. There's uh, people camping out at the Board of Elections in anticipation tomorrow morning where I'm going to join them of, of early vote starts tomorrow. Um, we're ready. We're organized. And that's how you win on the with this onslaught in the face of this onslaught of money. It used to be that rich people who traveled a lot out of the country, whether business people or just people wealthy enough to travel out of the country, were the ones who used absentee. But now everybody right. uses it. I mean, I use it because I have to be in New York sometimes or I can't vote at home. But how does early voting affect you? Is it still lean Republican or is it even Stephen now? The, the no, people I, I, vote think early. It's, I think it's flipped. It used to be you had to give a reason for early voting. You had to be disabled. You had to be over 65 or you had to be out of the, you originally just you had to be on travel. And that yeah. would mean people and wealthy people in Florida or business people more likely Republicans. Now it's it's all about organizing and getting getting people there early. In Ohio, we have what's called the Golden Week. And this was interestingly written by a Republican legislator. Uh, the law was several years ago where uh, for one week registration is still open so you can register at the Cuyahoga County or Franklin County or Richland County Board of Elections. You can register this week to vote and you can vote in your same trip to the Board of Elections. It's really election day registration for a week. I like that. Uh, it, it really makes sense. And we're urging people to come in this week, people particularly who are least likely to be registered. And that's people on college campuses that are coming back to school, uh, more low income people and people that might have moved for business reasons, whatever, and you need to update their registrations. 
Okay, here's the battle going on in the air. You're talking the ground, ground game. Here's the air game. The Obama campaign's running this ad in Ohio to attract voters in coal country. Let's take a look at this one. Seen these new ads where Mitt Romney says he's a friend of coal country? This is the guy who wants to keep tax breaks for companies that ship American jobs overseas. The same guy who had a Swiss bank account and millions in tax havens like Bermuda and the Caymans. And on coal? Well, here's what he said as governor outside a coal-fired power plant. I will not create jobs or hold jobs that kill people. And that plant, that plant kills people. Well, this is a tricky business because you have a coal situation and environment and all those, those concerns. How do you win on that argument in your state? And how's Mandel running that case? He seems like he's stuck with the Romney idea. Yeah, he is. And I, I think you win on that by, you know, you, you know, we've talked enough on this show, Chris, and you get this better than almost anybody, that it's not liberal, conservative, left or right. It's whose side are you on? And when, you know, I, I go to Belmont County and I go to Zanesville and Cambridge and Woodsfield and these communities in Appalachia, and they know I want I want to keep programs strong for veterans. They know in putting them back to work. Veterans, as you know, have a higher unemployment rate than the general population. Uh, we're always working on helping with manufacturing. There's a lot of small manufacturers in these small communities. Uh, and I want to make sure that these workers get an opportunity to send their kids to school. Do we, we have more we have coal, more coal mine jobs today in Ohio than we did four years ago. It's not a huge number anymore, but it's it matters in our state. And we're seeing those those I, I think those miners come around and support the president in the end in pretty large numbers because they know he he fights for them on taxes. He fights for them on yeah. on issues that, of opportunity for their kids for all of that. I hope they don't go for those race baiting, terrible ads on welfare, which are nothing more than a cheap ploy to get people to vote with their resentments. Anyway, thank you, Senator Sherrod Brown. Glad to be back. Of Ohio. Thanks, Chris.